Hello and welcome once again to the Pro Tipster Football Podcast. I'm Pro Tipster Paddy. I'm joined by Pro Tipsters Martin and Dan. And boy, do we have a great podcast for you. We'll have our Pro Tipster Italia expert Marco on and our Pro Tipster La Liga expert David as well. But before we get to talk to those boys, we're going to delve deep into the football markets of the Premier League, the Championship, and we have some European football as well. Hello, lads. I hope you're doing very well. Hi there. Not too bad. Not too bad. How are we? Very good. Very good. So look, uh, before we get started, we'll do a couple of reminders. Uh, you can listen to this podcast, of course, on iTunes, we're on Stitcher, we're on all the Android podcatchers, we're on YouTube, we're on the Pro Tipster blog, and we're also now on the Pro Tipster main site. Just, so just have a look under the new news section and you'll see news. us there. News, yeah. And, uh, for now, anyway. And, um, what else have we got to remind you of? Yeah, uh, Dan, you reminded us yesterday, so I'm going to ask you again. Uh, Pro Tips are have a new uh, offer on our shop, so can you tell us all about it? Um, you can get uh, a day of uh, premium access for just 5,000 Pro Tips to coins. It works out to half a euro. Uh, you get 10,000 Pro Tips to coins to register on our site. So a um, little pro tip for you all. Um, if you register on the site, maybe um, on a Friday... And then you've got two days pro content, the premium content you can buy in the shop, ready for the weekend of football. Magic. And okay then, so let's do our social media reminders. You can get me Pro Tipster Pod on Twitter. Uh, I'm also on Facebook, Pro Tipster Paddy. And uh, yeah, we're always hanging around the Facebook page as well. So Pro Tipster UK on Facebook. Martin, where are you on social media? Yeah, guys, come and find me on Twitter at ProTipster ENG and on Facebook, ProTipster Martin, three separate words. Daniel? You can find me on Twitter at ProTipster Dan, all one word, and on Facebook, ProTipster Dan, all one word. Nice and easy. Good. And we're going to do something uh, a little bit differently uh, today. We have, we, we've done this on a live stream last week. Uh, we're going to give out uh, an accumulator of our, uh, some of our tips towards the end so basically on what the, both of the pro tipsters agree on we'll put that into an ACA and we'll take one of the tips from our uh, La Liga and Syria tipsters as well ok so let's get started then the first match uh, to talk about second place Juventus are taking on 11 place Fiorentina on Friday night a little stat I found there have been over the, over 2.5 goals in 11 out of 15 Fiorentina home matches uh, Martin you want to take the helm on this yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that Juve is so big, to be fair. I thought it'd be like around the 1.7 mark, but uh, 1.85 for Juve to win straight off the bat for me is a, a pretty good price. You know, Fiorentina got smashed 4-1 against Verona the last time out at home, and uh, they've only won one in six at home. And, you know, you're coming up against the Juventus side of scored twice as many goals as you and conceded, and Fiorentina conceded twice as many goals as Juve. So, um I can't see beyond a Juventus win. They've won 10 in a row in all competitions and they absolutely thumped uh, Sassuolo 7-0 last weekend. So I feel, uh, you know, I feel sorry for Fiorentina fans at the moment because um, I don't think it's going to be a pretty one this weekend. So well, I've, I, I w- I've just been talking to, to Pro Tipster Marco. We'll, we'll be hearing from him later in, in the edit. And um, he was saying that uh, well, according to him and in the in the Italian press, Juventus they're not really thinking about this match at all. They're they're really you know they're they're um, nervous about uh, Spurs coming next Tuesday. Oh wow! So you reckon that they, they might have take their eye off the ball this weekend? Maybe. Well, that this is Ooh. his thinking anyway, and his tip was Ooh. actually um, uh, Fiorentina double chance. Wow! Yeah, just based on that. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know. I don't know. I mean. I, He's more of an expert at Serie A than I am. Uh, I'm just looking at plain stats. Um, I can't see beyond a Juve win, but um, yeah, if he thinks that, then fair play. Mm-hmm. It could could be the way to go. It's a hard one to call. Right, Dan. I know. I know you're not bothered with Johnny Foreigner games. So <laughs> no, not not this week. No, not this week. <laughs> so look, we'll we'll go to you first then, because the the on Friday night the championship kicks off with 14th 14th placed Millwall, who are taking on Cardiff who are up at the lofty heights of fourth in the table. So, Dan, how do you see this going? Well, I think it's going to be feisty. Um, on the pitch, off the pitch, around the stadium. <laughs> um, Millwall against Cardiff on a Friday night is going to be 
Steve. Yeah. Um, proper naughty, to quote our friend Danny Dwyer. Uh, Danny Dwyer. <laughs> Danny Dwyer. <laughs> you know who I mean, don't you? Kieran uh, Dwyer? Yeah. Um, so, Millwall, uh, in the cup in the week, lost 1-0 away to Rochdale, which was a bit of a shocker, really, because Rochdale Ooh. are not a great team, and Millwall, I think, were expected to progress. Um, they did make six changes to that team, and they will make like a similar number again for this weekend. So you'll see probably a closer team to the one that beat Reading last weekend, as tipped by me, I believe, um, playing against Cardiff. Millwall were draw specialists as well. Um, they've, they've, they've won defeat in seven. Um, I think the last time they lost the, the Den was November, something like that. Um, Cardiff, on the other hand, they're not great away, although they did thump Leeds uh, 4-1. Their first win in five away games. Match they got uh, Christiansen the sack. Mm. Um, Cardiff scored goals. Um, you look, you look at Cardiff. Uh, I think they've scored four twice in three games. So uh, I'll be looking at the goals market on this. I, I, I think I remember that the over, the overs market was a little bit lower than I thought it would be. Um, but as for the match result, uh, I, I'm t- I, although Mill did lose in midweek to Rochdale. The home form, Cardiff's dodgy away form, and the fact that it's going to be at a seething den, I'm going to go with Millwall on this. Millwall at around 2.6 is what I saw earlier. Is it around that price? Uh, let me just check the latest price for you. Uh, da, 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 da. Only one second. I should, I should be quicker at this, but obviously I'm not. 2.61. Ah, nice. Um, up a bit. Yeah, <laughs> which, which, which is value. Which is value. Um, the bookies are obviously saying this one's a really hard one to call because I think the Asian handicap line is at zero for this. Um, which, which would suggest that the bookies like, mm-hmm, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Draw. Um, but I, I it, it, it's one of those games. Um, I mean, Cardiff did it. Uh, Cardiff against Leeds is a is a tasty game as well, and Cardiff took Leeds apart. But um, yeah. the Dens a different proposition. Mm. The Dens just nasty, <laughs> <laughs> and um, Bill will approve that. You know, it's it's a fortress for them. They, they don't lose many games there. So, yeah, I, I'm backing up for this one. Good man, what do you think, then, Martin? Um, yeah, it's going to be. Like Dan said, it's going to be a tasty game. I think I think the police were happy that Millwall didn't progress in the FA Cup because uh, it would have been uh, <laughs> would have come up against Spurs Ooh. in the next round. So, <laughs> so I think they got away with that one. But um, yeah, last it's tough to call. It really is. The last two meetings have been nil nil. The last seven uh, meetings between the two sides, both teams have scored. No selection has come in. Um, I know what Dan's saying about goals. Cardiff have goals in, and obviously they smashed Leeds four-one last weekend. Uh, Millwall are, are are bad at home. Um, it is a fortress, and it's a place that I'll never step foot in. Um, Millwall have drawn three of the last four at home, so I've not had a bet just yet. But I'm considering ba- based on. The last seven meetings between the two sides, um, and the fact I don't like Millwall, I'm considering both teams to score no at 1.8, or just going down the middle, and potentially it could be another nil-nil, one-all. Um, uh, the draw could be the way to go, but I've not had a bet yet. Um, I probably will leave it alone, to be honest, um, but I'd like to see Millwall suffer a defeat here. <laughs> uh, everyone, everyone wants to see Millwall suffer a defeat. No one likes Millwall. <laughs> but um, I think... We we don't offer it on Pro Tipster, but I think if anything um, is value this weekend, then it's probably a red card. I don't know what the price is, but it wouldn't surprise me if there's a red card in this game. No, me either. Before before we get to Premier League, lads, uh, I, said, mm. I presume you've been reading uh, the news stories during the week about Conte being too expensive to fire. Any opinions? 20, Twenty-seven million or something, is it? Is that too expensive these days? Well, I mean. I wouldn't pay it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Like I don't think Chelsea... Uh, I think Abramovich is being a bit more, a bit smarter with his money these days. So um, I think if, if that is true, I, I, I'm not sure he'll pay it. I, I think I read this morning Luis Enrique doesn't want the job till the end of the season anyway. Okay. So, because apparently he's the favoured person to replace uh, Conte. Um yeah, 27, but 27 million is just obscene. But of course, 
they got West Bromwich Albion this weekend, and as we discussed uh, in the combined eleven yeah. podcast, kiss of this is this is the jinx game. The kiss of death. This is the one that got Mourinho the sack. This is the one that got Willis Boas the sack. So um, yeah. the, 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 the Roberto, the Roberto Di Matteo lost to them just before losing to Juventus as well. Uh, yeah, mm. they're Chelsea's curse, aren't they? Um, this thing with Enrique, though, I think he's. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if he's ever read this, but the reason that he got in uh, Ancelotti. Uh, years ago was because uh, Abramovich, I mean, because he wanted Chelsea to have this uh, uh, defined kind of um, style of play, like he was jealous so, or not jealous, but he wanted to like, everyone knows how Barcelona plays he wanted yeah. he wanted people to have the same thing with Chelsea, but uh, you know, getting Ancelotti in, An- Ancelotti doesn't really have a particular style of play and he just kind of, you know, he just makes every, he's a really good man manager so uh, getting Ancelotti in, so maybe going with Enrique, he'll finally have that but um, I don't know. Like I mean, I don't know, if, I don't know if Chelsea have got the players to to play like that. Oh, though. Definitely. I mean, no, 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 no. no. I have to have a big, big mix up in the summer if if Enrique did come in. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a strange one. Like surely, I don't, know, I don't know. Like is he that much of a um? What are the words I'm looking for? Kind of a millionaire playboy that he just wants a team who play nice football and and he doesn't care about winning. Because like then he should have just bought Swansea. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> really, but anyway, right. Let's move on then to the Premier League uh, Saturday matches. So fifth place Spurs taking on sixth place Arsenal. Now, of course, we had a combined eleven podcast about this, so you can check that out and you can find out who uh, Dan and Martin nearly fell out about. And uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, let's go with uh, Dan first on this. Um. Okay. So I. I, I I'm, I'm, I'm gonna not think about the Champions League, Europa League matches that come afterwards. I'm just gonna go solely on the fact it's North London derby, mm. and that's all they care about. Um, Spurs, unbeaten in the hi- at home in the Premier League since August, I think. Uh, I think it was when they, the last loss in the Premier League was Chelsea, if I remember yeah. rightly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eight wins in 12 at home. Um, six of them, uh, six of them, the, I can't even read. Ah! Six of them, they only score. Uh, they, they score. They only conceded uh, one goal or less. Um, nice. Sorry, six clean sheets. They've only scored more. That's it. Six. I can't remember. <laughs> right, sorry. I don't know if you saw the picture on Twitter that I, on my show notes, but they're terrible this week. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Six clean sheets. Only uh, two games where they conceded more than one goal. So they do not concede many goals at home. Arsenal three Premier League wins to Wales season. We know all about this. Czech might not play. Biggest mm. fact though, Anthony Taylor, the ref, Arsene Wenger hates him um, because of various controversial decisions that have got him banned, got him fined, and I'm sure Wenger is just so happy that Taylor's got this uh, got this um, high profile game. Um, last two games between the two teams finished two 0 to the home side. And my feeling is that this one will finish 2-0 to the home side. Interesting. Very good. Martin? Um, yeah, Dan, Dan's uh, reeled off a lot of the stats that I've had, had written down. Um, Spurs, for me, are, are, it's going to be a tight game. I think Spurs at evens are a great value. I know it's at Wembley, so it's a different, uh, different kettle of fish ground-wise, but they'll both play some exciting football. I I think there might be goals, you know. I'm just looking at some stats, like both teams of scores come in 34 times between the two sides in the Premier League, which is more than any other Premier League fixture. Um, and the only way for me is that Spurs seem to drop a lot of points um, from leading positions against Arsenal. Um, actually dropped 37 points in Premier League history um, against them, uh, which is more than any other Premier League. Martin, um, Martin let me jump in there. How much do yeah, you think, because uh, the last... Um North London Derby, uh, Arsenal made a complete fool of Spurs and, and a lot of people, ourselves included, I think, we, uh, people thought that, um, Spurs were really going to make a statement and this was them taking the next step. They were going to mm. do well against Arsenal and Arsenal just made a complete show of them. It, it, is, it, are they going to be out for revenge here? Is, are, are they going to be thinking of that? Yeah, I think it'd be in the back of their minds a little bit, but I don't think, um, you know, I think what happens in the past stays in the past, and, and these these guys will just be focused. The Spurs fans and and the players will be focused on just getting one over on Arsenal this weekend. And so, some some teams, like you mentioned, Juventus, have, might have one eye on on the Champions League. I don't think Spurs will. 
Um, this is probably the, you know, the biggest game in the season for them. Um, at home against, you know, their local rivals who should be in Woolwich anyway. Um, but <laughs> it's, as a neutral, I, I love, I love watching these games. You know, back in the day, um, you know, you had your Ian Wrights and, and, and Ginolas and, and sort of players like that. It was, it was great to watch and I think Spurs might just have too much for us. They're both attacking wise. They're great. You know, they've scored, they've both scored 51 goals this season in the Premier League. Um, so that's not a problem. It's at the back where there's a problem and, and for Arsenal, if Petr Cech doesn't, doesn't make it, it might be a blessing in disguise, you know, because, um, they can see 11 more goals than, than Spurs in the Premier League this season and for me, Arsenal need to probably score two or three goals to, to get, to win this game because I can, I can see Spurs scoring a couple. So, um, and the fact that Arsenal won just once in the last six away, they're not in the greatest of form. And that, that win was a tough 3-2 win at Palace as well. So they, they only scraped by there. Um, so I think, I think the Spurs are pretty good value at even. So I'll be taking that on. All right, good stuff. Yeah, their, their away is like one win, two draws and seven losses. Oh, no, sorry. I'm reading that wrong. That, that, that's Watford. That's the next match. <laughs> big, big stupid Paddy. Um, so yeah, while we're on the subject of uh, Watford, then West Ham uh, twelve for taking on Watford eleven. So we'll stick with you, Martin. You being the resident ha- happy hammers, happy hammer. Okey doke. Um, yeah, I'll I'll be going to this one. Um, I'm not. <laughs> am I confident? Pro- no, not really. Um, <laughs> last season, Watford smashed us four two. Um, we actually took the lead in that game as well. <laughs> oh. um, and Patrice Ever has just signed yesterday, if, if anybody didn't know that. Um, whether he starts or not is another thing. I don't know how match fit he, he actually is. Um, but we've got Masawaku who's suspended for another five or six games. So bringing in him was good. And, you know, David Sullivan did say in the transfer window that the, the, the times of West Ham signing 32 year olds is over. Um, and he's right because he's 36. So, but I've gone for over two and a half here at 1.86. Um, obviously they smashed us 4-2 last season, as I mentioned. They got an unbelievable win against Chelsea um, last time out, and the last seven meetings between us uh, and Watford have seen 22 goals. Um, and we 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 do tend to score at home. You know, it's not a great record. Um, but one in five. At the moment, but at home we scored in seven of the last eight. Um, and Watford just seems to have goals, goals in them at the moment. And Delafeu, um, looks like a great signing for them. I, f- I actually thought he was pretty decent at Everton and it was a shame that he left Everton to be honest, but Watford got him and yeah, he's looking like an absolute steal at the moment. Yeah, um, but he was, he was never going to fit into th- that Barcelona team, you know, like he's I don't know why they signed, why, why they create Call him back. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get the why they resigned him. I think um, the Neymar thing just caught them all, all, on on the hop, and they just like, oh, 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 quick, we need some to, someone to fill there. But he was, he was, like, he's, of course, he's a good player. He's a professional footballer in the Premier League. He's obviously a good player, but yeah. he's, he's not Barcelona quality. So yeah, Watford definitely have have a good sign in there. Uh, Dan, hmm, I'm just just thinking about the uh, Delafay. You saying about Delafay? You know, why did Barcelona sign him? Maybe Messi wants to. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to bring this up later, Dan. So please, yeah, tell us about this. So, um, yeah, um, Barcelona played. Uh, I can't remember who it was, um, but they they, um, they they conceded, and Messi basically blames uh, Lucas Dina, who's their second choice left back, um, for not contributing to the defensive solidity, and said that he should never wear a Barcelona shirt again. Ooh. And which is a bit harsh about one of your teammates, but. Um, me and Paddy uh, were kind of talking about this um, before the uh, before the podcast. And this is messy, you know. He's um he's that good. Apparently, he can kind of dictate who's in and who is not in the team. Yeah. And I don't know. Um, I will confess that um part of my dislike for La Liga is because I don't like players like Messi. Yes, he's a great player, but um I don't like I don't him. Like him? Why not? Because of things like this. Because the fact he should have went to jail for tax fraud. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, lawyers aren't going to like this. 
<laughs> well, he did get a suspended sentence, and he is back up before the beak again. Oh, that's so, right, um, he is, yeah. Yeah. it's not like it's not like I'm, you know, um, conspiracy theories. Yeah. Here. No, but it's like, it's like we, 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 I, I brought this up before. We we're talking about Alexis Sanchez, and Sanchez did something wrong in in in, in training, and and Messi says something. I have no idea why you were so so expensive. Your crap. In future, just give me the ball. <laughs> This will be Alexis Sanchez, who also has a suspended sentence for tax fraud in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> 16 months. Um, he got it yesterday. Yes, he yeah, yes, yes. agreed a deal so he didn't have to get to prison. But you know, like, he, in fairness, Messi might be at Barcelona for too much longer. He, 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 he's gonna have to be tempted by China, surely, isn't he? Oh, yeah, that. but the, the really trouble is, it, it can't happen. So, um, Hebe Fortune, uh, who are a Chinese Super League side, has said, uh, well, it's, it's apparently emerged. Um, it was reported in Mundio es, es Sport, uh, yeah, one of, one of the Spanish <laughs> major football websites that, um, the only reason I signed Lovesi and Mascherano was because they want Messi. Yeah. And, you know, they're willing to like say to Messi, how much money do you want and where do you want it delivered? Um, <laughs> Messi's got a 700 million euro release clause in his contract. So, Right. And the, the problem with Chinese football as well is is that they've brought in a rule last year whereby if you bring in a foreign player for over 5 million euros, you have to pay a transfer tax of 100%. So if, and obviously it's a, it's a somewhat huge if, they actually did cough up 700 million euros to Barcelona, the transfer would actually cost them 1.4 billion euros. <laughs> Because of that tax, oh. it's, it's tax that, well, yeah, and it's um, to be honest, I, I understand why the Chinese have done this. Uh, there was a player who Villarreal was, say, uh, was selling called um, Bakambu, yeah, and his transfer fell apart because of it. He actually um, he he left Villarreal, um, like he he paid like he 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 paid his uh, what's it his um his uh, his release clause, but he's not been picked up. He's, he's not been taken to China. It's ridiculous. And he was supposed to be the, the most expensive um, African player ever. He was going to um, Beijing Gowan for 50-something million. Mm. And um, so Bacambo rescinded his contract with Villarreal, but Beijing Gowan are like, never heard of you, mate. Don't know what this is all about. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, um, two weeks... I'll, I'll read you the quote. Two weeks later, however... Beijing Guoan still had not announced the signing of Bakambu, who had already played for them and scored for the club. Oh. It, was re- it was reported that Beijing Guoan were trying to avo- uh, avoid paying a 100% tax plus an incoming transfer is worth over 45 million won, $7 million, by the Chinese Football Association. Wow. So, um, yeah, it's an absolute mess. <laughs> no, so, anyway... Getting back to West Ham versus Watford. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I hate betting on West Ham because they always mess me up. Yeah. Uh, one Premier League winning five. Um, you guys love a draw as well, don't you? Four draws in seven in the Premier League. But um, Watford, um, that that win in uh, against uh, Chelsea was their first uh, win in the Premier League since Boxing Day. Uh, not won away since November. So my bet on this game is to not waste my money and just <laughs> and, and probably not watch it either. Um, I, I'm just thinking, well, I, it's, it's not it's not, not on TV. Damning. Ah, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you might be able to find it somewhere, though, Martin. Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to ProTipster.com for more details. First place Man City taking on eighth place Leicester. Uh, let me give you some stats I found. City have a win-win double result in 10 out of 12 home games. So winning half time and winning the match. And they've won by two or more in 10 out of 12 as well. Leicester have conceded first in 11 out of 17 away matches against the top six. Yeah, you almost nicked one of my stats, but you didn't. Um, so Man City have not scored less than two goals in a Premier League get home game oh, this geez. season. It's, it's been four, four, three, three, three. Um, they, they, they are just smashing the goals. Um, yeah. That hiccup against Burnley and um, kind of like a, ended a run, but t- twelve home wins in the Premier League on the spin. You know, <laughs> is anyone going to pr- truly stop them? Um, I don't think it'll be Leicester. I mean, Leicester have got one defeat in five. 
but they've not won away since uh, the 13th of December, and mm. they've got the Mares problem as well. Mares has been like out of training. I don't know if he's I don't know if he's come back to training yet or not. He I wasn't there yesterday. So if Mares doesn't train, doesn't play, less I mean, even if he does play, is his heart in it against the team that he wanted to sign because Mares wanted to go. Yeah. Um, Guardiola said today, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, uh, I'm done. Morris not not going back in for him in the summer. But Dan, Dan, so. why didn't they let him go? I mean, surely, yeah, like everyone, everyone was a winner here. They, Leicester were getting a lot of money. They, they bought they bought Morris for what a million, less than a million. They were because getting they'd sixty had, for because they'd have had to replace him, and there wasn't enough time to do so. Yeah, but mm-hmm. Leicester are fine. They're not going to go down around in the season. They're, yeah, they're, but that, that's the argument. It's like, yeah, okay, we get ninety five. I mean, they wanted they wanted ninety five million for Morris, including the player. Yeah, and Man City were like, no, we're not yeah. paying that. And to be fair to Man City, I wouldn't either. I don't, I don't think, I, while he's a good player and I think he would fit into the way Man City play, they don't need him. Uh, they'd be better, and I think what they will do is they'll be better off bringing in uh, a younger player who will play as backup to Sane, Sterling, um, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, like someone who, they do this so well, they'll, you look at, you look at their squad and their squad is like, it's more than just 11 players they can, they can rotate, and they're trying mm-hmm. to keep them happy. And they're better. I, I've noticed that they're, they're, they've been signing younger players who are only going to increase in value. So, yeah. I, I, Maris is twenty-seven, something like that, I think. Um, so yeah, he's he's not the sort of ideal age uh, for them. Yeah, he's he's twenty. Yeah, he's twenty-seven this month. That was a good guess, wasn't it? Okay. Um, yeah. Um, going back to this game though, Man City win. Um, I doubt there's any, I, I really doubt there's any value in it. Um, no. I'm just looking now, like Man City to win 1.22, no tar. <laughs> um, the Asian handicap line's gotta be about one and a half at one least. 1.75 and City are 1.79. <sighs> yeah, um, that, I mean, that, that would stack up with Man City winning by, um, by three goals to nil or something like that. Um, which they have been doing with frightening regularity. Will they do it again or is this the one that stops it? Mm. I don't know. Um, and I'm sure the overs market's really crap as well. Overs is 1.38. Over 3.5 isn't too bad though. It's 1.97, which is probably the best it's been in the last 10 games uh, for City. I've got to be honest with you. I think we're at a point where betting on Man City is, um, not a valued, not a valued no. Um, and it's just, you know, because, because they're so hot favourites, but, the, 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 now the Champions League back is back. The, the question is how much they're going to put their foot on the gas, or they're going to ease up a bit now, knowing that they've got a comfortable lead and co- concentrate on the uh, on the Champions League games instead. I mean, is it possible? Is it possible that Man City will play a weakened side in this game, um, or, or a weaker side on this game? Mm. Thinking about, I mean, I know they've only got Basel away, but you know, they've, they've get a good win there. And you're through to the next round, aren't you? Mm, so, true. would it not make sense for them to play a slightly lesser side against Leicester City and be banging form for Tuesday? Um, I think as well, this is the first week they've not played Monday, Wednesday, uh, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday for three or four months. Wow. I, I know um, after the uh, Burnley game, De Bruyne was saying how tired they all were, which I kind of understand. So, I think I'd... I, 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 I'd be in, I, I would be interested to see the lineup Guardiola puts out. Good, all right, Martin. Um Yeah, with that, I, I don't think there's any value in it, um, so I'm probably not gonna not gonna have a bet on this game. Um, like like Dan said, I just don't think there's there's any value on City at the moment. Um, but Leicester are, are, are got big problems. I can't see them getting anything out of the game. Obviously, I lost two one to Everton. Uh, drew against Swansea, and it's just not going right for them at the minute. And it is down to the Riyad Mahrez situation. I think um, Dan mentioned about a player. I think the player was actually Patrick Roberts, um, who's on loan at Celtic. I think that's the player they wanted uh, as part of the deal. Um, but for whatever reason, that didn't happen. And Guardiola, I don't think he's happy with the way Mahrez is has dealt with the situation. So I, I don't think he's going to go back in for him in the summer. Um, but yeah, City not lost a home in any competition for over a year now. Um, and like Dan said, won 12 in a row at home, 45 goals. So that's nearly four, that's 3.7 goals a game. 
That's an incredible ratio. Um, and I expect City to win comfortably. But for me, there, there's just no value to, to have a bet. Right, so now we have our Italian expert pro tipster, Marco. Hello, Marco. How are you feeling? I hope everything's better than last week. Yeah, sure. Better. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Uh, right, so look, man, what's been happening in, in, in Italian football this week? Uh, we have uh, uh, great, uh, great matches uh, uh, like Fiorentina Juventus and La- Napoli Lazio. I have uh, um, clear ideas uh, with uh, these two match, and I have uh, another tips with another match. So, uh, firstly, I want to to speak about uh, Fiorentina Juventus because uh, market is um, all on Juventus uh, 1.80, but in my opinion. Um, uh, because uh, we have uh, in uh, next midweek uh, uh, Champions League Juventus against uh, Tottenham uh, will be a difficult match for uh, for Juventus. Uh, it's a, a historical match, a big rivality with Fiorentina. In uh, in this uh, in this match, Fiorentina uh, try always to to get uh, better and. Uh, uh, this team uh, in uh, in match uh, um, against Juventus uh, have always a, a, a great uh, um, energy, a great stamina, and in my opinion, uh, double chance in one point ninety is a great odds. Cool, because I, I actually I, I wrote an article for Pro Tipster about this match, and I was looking up Fiorentina. Uh, their home form has been okay. They're not winning so much at home, but they're drawing a lot. Uh, their manager Spiolo, he's he's made them very, very, very good defensively, hasn't he? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and uh, is a um, is a um, a special a special match for uh, for fans. Is a special match for uh, for uh, for team and so- and, uh, and uh, societies. So, in my opinion, uh, this is uh, it would be a, a, d- a difficult game for Juventus. And so, in sure, uh, the the main uh, the um, the main reason is uh, uh, for. Uh, uh, Champions League in the next midweek. Yeah, exactly. And as well, Spiolo, he, he used to play, he used to play for Juventus. He won, he won the European League with them, or European Cup with them, beating uh, Liverpool back in the 80s. Um, uh, about the, the Tottenham match though, Marco, um, that's happening next Tuesday. Uh, how do you see that going? Uh, in my opinion, Allegri um, uh, studied this match for a, a great defensive uh, match. So, um, my, my, I think uh, um, uh, the two matches uh, is going to not uh, a great number of goals. Okay, you see, you see some proper Italian Catenaccio uh, masterclass. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Wonderful, wonderful. Sure. My favorite type of football, man. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, what else have we got for us then? Yeah, um, two two tips for uh, Serie A uh, with Napoli, Lazio, and uh, Torino, Udinese. Okay, go for it. Okay, uh, in my opinion, for uh, Napoli have uh, a low price, one point sixty, one point sixty five is not a great odds. Uh, so I'm going uh, with uh, over two point five at one point sixty five. Um, in uh, this match, uh, Napoli and uh, Lazio have a great striker. So in my opinion, three goals. Is, uh, is sure. And the last tip for me is uh, Torino Udinese, uh, Torino to win. Because uh, when uh, Torino uh, signed uh, with uh, Mazzari, do you remember Mazzari in Watford? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Mazzari arrived in, uh, in, uh, in Torino and um, uh, have not a great, uh, a great change in strategy, but a great, stra- a great change in mentality of this, uh, this team. Two, two draw in a way and two win in a home match. In my opinion, uh, a sure win uh, uh, for Torino with Udinese and price is uh, 1.85, a good price. Okay, Marco, uh, thank you so much for coming on, uh, for coming on the podcast again and uh, have a great weekend. Enjoy the football. Thank you very much. Bye bye. As you probably know, podcasts still grow by word of mouth. 
Show your support for the Pro Tipster Football Show by telling your football mad friends all about our podcast or by leaving a nice review for us on iTunes. Welcome back. We're going to take a look now at a couple of championship matches. No, sorry, we're not. We're going to take a look at one championship match and then one match from League 2. Yeah, League 2, you heard properly. Um, second place Derby are taking on 13th place Norwich and this is one that is very close to my heart. I've, I've, I've kept cheerful on the podcast so, so far, but it's been a rough day for me and for all of Ireland with the retirement of, of the Wesley Irish Messi, Lennon. of Wessey Hoolahan. What a sad, I haven't been this sad since Steve Irwin died, and I'm not lying. I'm <laughs> miserable today. Every time I turn on social media and go to Twitter, I just see, I'm actually tearing up now. I, I, I see, uh, gifts of, 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 of Wesley and, 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 and all sorts of praise from, coming from all the Irish, uh, supporters and, and, mm. uh, and press. And it's, I'm so sad. I'm so sad that he's retiring because he was screwed over for so long by, by Irish football managers. Giovanni Trapattoni never gave him a sniff and, uh, okay, I know I'm starting to ramble here, and I I don't hate Trapattoni as much as 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 other Irish football fans do because Trapattoni did what he was supposed to do, but you know it's a crying shame uh, Hooligan didn't get his chance uh, a lot earlier. But anyway, so uh, Norwich, please do the business this weekend and hammer Derby. <laughs> you know, put a smile <laughs> yeah. on my face. Uh, Martin, how do you see this one going? Um. I see this one going as a as a home win, personally. <laughs> um, yeah, with Hulahan, you know, it's a shame that he's uh, he's retiring, but um, he did, I don't think he even reached 50 games for Ireland, no, did he? No, he didn't, no. Uh, that's, 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 that's the worst thing. 43. There yeah. you yeah, okay. go. But, um, yeah, I think, I think personally, Derby are going to have too much for Norwich here. Um, I think 2.08 for the Derby win is pretty good value, considering, um, considering the form Derby are in at the moment. Um, they won this reverse fixture... In October, by two goals to one, um, they're unbeaten in eleven uh, with clean sheets in the last each of the last four games. Um, but Norwich are in pretty decent form as well, won four of the last five. Um, but they've only scored one goal in each of the last four games, and I personally think one goal if, is not going to be enough to beat Derby. I mean, even even Tom Huddleston's scoring at the moment. Um, <laughs> so for me, um, not delve too much into into things stats wise, but from what I see on the surface, Derby have got too much for Norwich, and so that's where I'm going. Do you agree, Dan? Um, okay, so yeah, Derby are unbeaten in 11, but they do love a draw. Uh, four draws in the last seven games, mm. um, which is interesting. Um, and two of them, uh, two draws in the last three at home, like I said, Norwich are in good form. I'm looking at both teams to score no in this game. Um, the reason being is that both teams have good defences, mm. and um, so if you look at Derby County, for example, um, in five of their last six home games, clean sheets, you look at Norwich um, away from home in the championship, and they've had four successive clean sheets as well. So I think it's going to be a, um, a tight, I, I think it will be a tight game anyway. Uh, because both teams have got good defences, and no, and both teams have scored 1.8. The other option, of course, is goals. Um, mm. uh, two and a half goals, which is the standard line. Under two and a half goals is 1.66, which is a bit skinnier, but it's still maybe worth a shot, but I'm going for both teams to score no. Um, Interesting. Surely, I was going to say, surely, so you're, su- you're suggesting that maybe it might be worth going on the nil-nil, even though we don't offer it on Pro Tipster, but with, with other bookies, it'd be good value. Yeah, um, I, I'm just just looking at the fact that both sides are, are just keeping clean sheets, clean mm. sheets, clean sheets. Which, um, and I know I know the Derby manager Gary very well, obviously, because uh, um, he was the V-net uh, Messiah when he was at Bowling <laughs> City for a while. Although he did turn into the ver- uh, the Bromsgrove version of Tony Pulis towards the end. <laughs> um, he plays very defence, uh, plays, uh, teams that, uh, allow the opposition to have a lot of the ball and then just win the ball back, hitting them on pace and, and scoring the counter. But that often, that doesn't often give high scoring games. And I know they've scored a few, but I, I, I'm just thinking against the Norwich side that probably he'll be happy with a point. It's going to be a, a bit of a stalemate. So, Norwich are in 13th, so, you know, mm. they, they can't fall any further down the table. 
They're up against the Derby side who are second. Um, I think I think it's going to be a draw. And I, I th- I, I'm just going to go with both teams to score. No, I, I do like nil nil. Um, just curious. Um, nil nil will be under zero point five goals. Mm. That would be the real ballsy bet. Um, but I'm not going to go for that. Uh, next up then, um, a match that's uh, dear to your heart, Martin. Uh, 14th place Stevenage are taking on first place Luton. Luton are eight points clear at the top of League Two. Yeah. So uh, tell us all about this. No, I, I live, I live in Hertfordshire, banging pretty much bang in the middle between Stevenage and Luton. Um, so I've kind of known about this rivalry over the years and. It's going to be a feisty one, that's for sure. I mean, people are talking about Cardiff and Millwall. Uh, this could potentially kick off. Um, I mean, Luton don't really have the rivalry with Watford that they've had over, over in recent in, in years gone by. Um, so they they kind of just ramped it up for this one, really. And they got and Stephen has got smashed by Luton seven one in the reverse fixture earlier in the season. So they'll want to avenge that defeat um, in one way or another, and it might not just be on the pitch. Um, now. I mean, in the 2015 game, Luton, there was Luton fans that jumped into the home fans um, at, at Stevenage and started throwing punches and stuff. So um, they've got they've got history, and like Luton Town have got a uh, I've got a hooligan group called the Migs, um, Men in Gear, I think it stands for. Um, Men in and- Gear. Yeah, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why they've called them themselves that, but. <laughs> You know, they've been going since the 80s and, and, and they cause a, a quite a lot of trouble in the lower leagues. So um, I'm, I'm looking at this from a football point of view and also I, I want to see if it, anything happens um, in the stands as well because it's going to be a... The police have got a, a good job job on their hands, I think. Um, and I, I personally think Luton at 1.78, um, they're absolutely flying in League 2 and it's definitely worth a bet for me. Uh, Dan, and from you? Yeah, um, we haven't covered Luton for a long time. Um, so I've, I've got Nathan Jones. You've been gone too long. <laughs> um, Luton manager, obviously Nathan Jones. Yeah, um, basically back up most of what, uh, pretty much what, what, what Martin said. Um, Stevenage, one win in five league two games. Um, quite a few draws in the last, uh, few games at home. Four draws in the last seven. Um, Luton, four wins in six. Um, but they, was it first win away in three, uh, the Grimsby game? Mm. Um, last week, um, and of course the reverse feature where um, Luton ran rampant seven uh, one. Um, I believe Andy Shinney, on loan from Birmingham City, had an absolute storm of that game. If I <laughs> right. um, he, he's definitely good enough for that league. Not good enough for the championship. Good enough for that league. And yeah. I'll probably be. I don't know enough, but um, just from what I've seen on paper, I'll probably back Luton. But it's, like say, it's a feisty game, and feisty yeah. games are hard to call. They are. They've got uh, Ollie Lee as well. He used to be at Birmingham, didn't he? Oh, Ollie Lee, um, who <laughs> we signed because he was Lee Clark's godson. Is that the actual <laughs> reason? That's the actual reason we signed him. And do you know where we signed him from? Um, I Barnet. Stephen Hitchborough. Oh really? I thought it was a. I thought uh, it was a Barnet. No, I'm really? pretty sure it's Stephen Hitch. I remember he was at Barnet before he played for you, but maybe it was a it was a club before that. Uh, I, I, you're probably right now, and I probably got it wrong. Uh, no, I used to follow. No, you're right. Quite. Barnet it was someone else we got from Stevens. Edit that bit out. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time for Barnet. Um, yeah, yeah Ollie Lee we signed purely because um, Lee Clark's godson. Um, he's also the son of um, West Ham legend. Rob yeah, Lee. Rob, Rob Lee. There you yeah. Know. It's never what you know, lads, is it? Oh no, it isn't. It isn't. We we um we signed Jason Lowe um just as a mate to as a favour to one of Harry Redknapp's agent mates. True story. Nice. It, it happens a lot in football. Um, more than you think. You look you look at the career of Alex Bruce. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just follows Steve everywhere, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh, sure. Look, look okay. at Real Madrid when Jose Mourinho was manager. It's just all of all of uh, Jorge Mendes guys were just getting signed left, right, and centre. You know, <laughs> it's no different. You know, just on a bigger scale. Uh, join us now. We have Pro Tips Sir David, our La Liga expert. Hello, David. Hello, hello, everyone. How are you? Not too bad, mate. How are you? 
fine, fine. Very it's good. Saturday, so weekend is coming. Weekend I'm is quite coming. happy. Uh, so, uh, what's been going on in uh, Spanish football this week? Well, uh, as you know, about we have something about that weekend. If you remember, we have a few surprises. For example, Barcelona draw against Espanyol. Real Madrid did the same. Another draw against Levante, 2-2. Two, two. So Atletico, which won 1-0 to Valencia, reduced point to Barcelona, but it's still far from Barca, you know, nine points to the to the top. And by the, uh, on the other hand, they have like 10 points over Real Madrid, so for them it's quite good. Um, during this week, we have uh, we are having the Copa del Rey semifinals. Yesterday, it was the second leg of the first semifinal. Uh, we have already one twin in the final. It's Sevilla. Sevilla won yesterday 2-0 to Leganes, and after 1-1 in the first leg, they are qualified to the final. And today we have the second, the second leg for Bar- Bar- Valencia Barcelona. They will play Mestalla. And as you know, the the Barcelona is leading 1-0 because they won 1-0 in No Can. So today we have this interesting game. In my opinion, it is quite quite interesting. And I was checking some um, some bets in Protester for that game. And I saw, for example, both teams to score. It was not too high odd. It's like 1.53, but uh, Valencia needs to make a goal, so it can be uh, quite interesting. And I assume that Barcelona will score. One goal. <laughs> I'm sure about that. Um, what else we have? For example, Barcelona to win one uh, 1.58, and I found another one quite interesting that is uh, less than one and a half goals in the first half. It's 1.64 because probably the, the first half it could be like a you know team fighting for the ball and they try to to find chances, but probably we are not going to see more than one goal or if we see. It. One goal in the first half. Mm-hmm. This is what I saw. Um, for the weekend, what we have for the weekend, uh, I was checking. Um, for example, we have Real Madrid and Barcelona. Both of them they play at home. Real Madrid against Real Sociedad and Barcelona against Getafe. And to be honest, if we are going to 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 play some bet here, it's not not really interesting because the odds are really low. They play at home. Um, you know, it is not really interesting. You can try something against. Real Madrid or Barcelona, probably to Barcelona, no, because they play against Getafe at home, so I don't think that they will they will lose any point. But maybe against Real Madrid, well, maybe you know that the situation is not good this season. One weekend good, one weekend bad. So who knows? Maybe something against Real Madrid uh, can be interesting. But for me, the most interesting game for the weekend, I see two games for Saturday. I see Villarreal Alaves. Uh, at home, uh, Villarreal at home plays, and I see that uh, Villarreal to win 1.69. That it can be interesting because I know both teams are playing really, really well, but Villarreal at home is really a strong team. It's one of the strongest teams at home in the Liga, and Alaves is coming after five loss in six games away. So I think 1.69 can be interesting for this game. <coughs> Uh, for Saturday, I have been see. Uh, I like Sevilla against Girona. Sevilla, uh, like I said, they are after qualify to the final, so maybe they are coming after hang- hangover, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> a bit hangover. And to be honest, Girona is playing really, really well. It's one of the surprise of La Liga this season. They are doing really, really well. So I think can be some some Asian handicap like positive to Girona, for example, plus one to Girona, and I saw odds in two point one five. Can be something can be something interesting for for the users to try this this odd. I think so because Girona is doing really really well this season. And can be good that one. Oh, good. Uh, there was something I wanted to ask you about as well. Um, Karen Seedorf is the um, new manager of Deportivo La Coruña. So, how as uh, what are people expecting him to do? Well, for the moment, I I, I was I was reading about that, and uh, he was talking in radios and so on. And I mean, you know, he he was coaching in uh, Milan for a few games. Yes. And he was in China as well, but you know, in China, nah, for me, the level, you know, <laughs> coach there is like nothing. And now, I mean. To, as a coach in this high level, I don't know. I, I know that he really, really, really like a strong character. So right now they are like doing like the two, two training per day that usually they were doing one. 
So now they are doing two training and like, uh, like he say in the, in the radio, like he's trying mainly to, to talk to the players, to try to, to get confident with them. And, you know, because the problem of Deportivo is like that. They are, they have good players, but they don't have so confident, you know, many games they are, they are starting losing like again Real Madrid that they were starting winning. Uh, Neil one, but after Real Madrid scored three goals, they were down, totally down, and they received eight <coughs> goals. And last weekend, they had the same problem. The, with the Real Sociedad, it was like 1-0, I think, at the half time, 2-0. And later on, they were down again, and they lost 5-0. So I think it's about confidence. Yeah, do, you think, do you think he'll be able to save them? Because they're 18th now on, on, on 17 points. They're three points behind Levante. Yeah, I mean, for me, for example, uh, I say like Las Palmas and Malaga. For me, they are, I mean, they are not in second league right now, but uh, they know they, they, it's hard for them, you yeah, know, yeah. in my opinion. And Deportivo, I mean, they have good squad. They have really, really well squad to be on the half on the, on the table. And now, you know, the, the problem of them that they they were like six games without any 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 win. So now they need to recover confidence. For me, the next two, three games, they are the key. If they get a uh, few good results, they can, they can, they can think about the state in La Liga. If they cannot get, uh, the, in the next two, three games good results, probably they will be in, in, in second league next season. It is what I, what I think about that. Okay, good. Thanks for joining us then, Pro Tips to David, and we'll speak to you next week. Uh, thank you. For sure, we'll talk next week. Thank you so much. Adios. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. If you have any betting questions you'd like to ask, don't be shy. Get in touch with Patty, Martin, or Dan on Twitter. ProTipster IRL, ProTipster EN, or ProTipster DAN. Or on Facebook at ProTipster UK. Right, so we're back then, and big thanks to uh, ProTipster David for coming on. We'll hear more from him next week. Um, lads, um, before we get it back to any football, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Swansea manager uh, Carlos Carvajal. And I know we, we did talk a little bit about him last week, but it was more kind of his uh, his mad anecdotes. Um, they're doing really well, aren't they? They haven't lost since the 2nd of January to Spurs. And I suppose it, it, I, I want to ask about him, but also about Paul Clement as well. What, what the hell is going on with Paul Clement? He was such a highly praised number two to Carlo Ancelotti for years and years. He was, he was supposed to be like, I suppose a bit like the Steve McLaren when he was uh, Alex Ferguson's coach. He was his next great thing. And mm. so like, okay, first of all, why do you think Clement can't make that step? to being a good number one and, and what is it about mm. Carlos Carver, Carvajal that has got Swansea playing so well? One, one of the problems is, is that um, many, many players uh, sorry, many coaches who are number twos don't make good number ones it's, it's yeah. hard to make the step up I think Clement had a few problems um, with the team as well uh, for example, you look at one of the players he brought in uh, from Bayern Munich, uh, Renato Sanchez mm. Renato Sanchez played all the way through uh, the season, but as like kind of like tailed off, and I was reading Clement saying that um like the the other player, the other Swansea players, they're like, why the hell are you playing him? He's crap. <laughs> which, which kind of ties in with what I thought of Renato Sanchez uh, during the Euro under 21s. He was awful. Yeah. Yeah. He had a really bad season with Bayern, and it was obvious that his confidence is completely shot. Um, I don't know what his attitude's like. Um, oh, is it, yeah, I remember Clement saying in training he was like smashing the ball in. He was doing all sorts. Great right in front of the crowd, one misplaced pass, and that'd be it. Gone. Mm. And I think Clement suffered because of things like that. Yeah, uh, I don't think it helped as well that I think I don't think it was his decision to get rid of Sigerson and Lorente. No, I don't think it was either. Um, but you know, Carver Carver uh, he, he has worked wonders, and the Swansea fans I know love him. Like, absolutely love him. Um. It, and I, I'm, I'm kind of happy as well because Sw- Swansea play, you know, Swansea have always played a fairly decent brand of football. Mm. Um, I'd rather see uh, a nice playing Swansea in the Premier League than uh, Tony Pulis's anti-football West Bromwich Albion, <laughs> <laughs> um, which has now become um, Alan Pardew's anti-football West <laughs> Bromwich Albion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, it, it, I, I know it's all about winning points and not plaudits, but. Yeah, uh, there's so many teams who try and play for 17th, it's just sticking. Mm. And it's nice to see a manager come in and actually, you know, get the players up and going again, and they're picking up some good results, you know. So, yeah, go then. Well, 8-1 in midweek, wasn't it? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was something else. Um, but I mean, they've got, how, they've got the weekend Burnley and then Brighton away. Um, a lot of potential to pick up some more points and, you know, they could be safe by the end of March if they keep going the way they're going. Um, he's done a, he's done an incredible job. Um, I don't think it, like, like Dan said, I don't think it was all Paul Clement's fault as to why it didn't work out. Um, at Swansea, I think people got sold behind his back when he didn't, didn't want to sell him, but I think, you know, the chairman wanted to bring in the funds. They, they didn't get used properly. Um, and yeah, it just didn't work out for him at Swansea. And like Dan says, some people are just better as an assistant. And, you know, even at Derby, it didn't really, he didn't really progress as much as I think Derby wanted to, uh, with him in charge. Um, <laughs> sorry, um, uh, Derby, there were problems off the pitch as well. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I, I can't say on this podcast, but put it this way, he was not sacked for football footballing reasons. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, Ooh, I can't wait to get off the podcast <laughs> and find out. Oh, let's get back to some football then, lads. So, uh, there's a massive Serie A match uh, happening on, uh, what day is that? On, there's a massive Serie A match happening on Saturday. Uh, first place Napoli are taking on third place Lazio. Now, uh, pro tips from Marco, who would, you will have heard, uh, his tip for this was over two and a half goals. And, uh, let me see, I have some stats here as well. Napoli have won by two or more in nine out of 14 home games. And oh. they've won 11 out of 14 home games. There have been over two and a half goals in 15 out of 16 Lazio away matches. So Marco's tip of you know, loads of goals uh, looks uh, decent enough. Uh, Martin, we'll go with you for on this. Yeah, um, I don't. I'm going to wait. I haven't had a bet yet, but I'm going to wait um, to look into it a little bit more. But for me, I, I'd love. I, I really want to see Napoli win Serie A. Absolutely. Uh, just, just someone other than Juventus, please. Um, so I, I can see Napoli winning this. Uh, they won four of the last five meetings um, against Lazio, and the other one was a draw. Um, so Lazio don't travel to Naples very well. Um, at the moment, and they're in good form, one four in a row. Um, whereas Lazio, I know they're third, um, but the wheels starting to fall off a little bit. You know, they lost lost two one to Milan. Um, they also lost at home to Genoa last time out, which is a bit of a shock. Um, so for me, I'm not I'm not going to have a bet just yet, but uh, I want to try and find some value. I don't. Um, what what were the odds on over two and a half again? Oh, it's low. It's like one point six. Yeah, I mean, even both teams to score is 1.62, so mm. I'll have another look um, to, before kick-off just to see if there's any value there, uh, because I am all about trying to find a little bit of value, but I might stick overs in in an acker uh, if I can't find a single. Yeah, I'll add it to ours, actually. We won't, we haven't agreed on many lads yet. Uh, so far, we have Tottenham, Arsenal, uh, Tottenham to win, Stevens, Luton, Luton to win, and Napoli, Lazio uh, over, so we need to find another two before the end of the show hopefully uh, we will okay, let's go to the Sunday matches then uh, first up we're, we're back in the Premier League 15th place Southampton are, play, are playing third placed Liverpool a uh, little stat I found Liverpool have scored first in 9 out of 11 away games which is hardly that surprising really uh, Dan how do you see this going down at St Mary's Um. well I I just wanted to talk about Mo Salah first because uh, I was reading something on BBC News today. Uh, basically, Mo Salah is, you know, God. Um, because he's the fastest Liverpool player to uh, 20 Premier League goals. Yeah. Did it in 25 games, two games quicker than Torres and Daniel Sturridge. And there was the, there's like a lot about him, about how he's such a, a nice guy and how he's like a, he's a hero back in Egypt. Um and some of the stats about him, about, uh, he's got the best minutes per goal, um, average for any player scored more than one goal in the Premier League this season, 92.71. He scored a goal every 92.71 minutes. Wow. Um, second highest top scorer in the Premier League with 21 behind Harry Kane, he's got 22. Um, top scorer for left footed goals with 18. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to get, I wanted to talk about that first because, we, we talk about him every week, and he's been he's been outstanding. And I hope that Chelsea are like, why do we sell him? <laughs> I, really I hope Mourinho. I hope Mourinho loses sleep over it. Mourinho and 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 De Bruyne, you know, as well, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But he probably doesn't because he doesn't have a heart or a soul. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and to be honest, to be honest, the game, 
Um, the only the stat that really stands out, Liverpool have got one defeat in 17 Premier League games, mm-hmm. which is pretty outstanding. And, and Southampton have just been poor. Um, not, not, uh, hang on. Let me, let me pull my stats back up because uh, I cannot read my writing today. <laughs> um, they, they, they haven't lost, I think, in four games, but they do draw a lot is the problem. Um, yeah. yeah, so in their last five games in all competitions, six games in all competitions, they've not lost. And, uh, but in their last four Premier League games, they've drawn three of them. And at home, they've not won at home since, uh, November when they beat Everton 4-1. So I'm all over the Liverpool win here, but I'm guessing there's not going to be much in the way of, oh, Liverpool 1.78 at the moment. So, Yes, that'll do. That, that, that's way too high. Liverpool should be about 1.5, mm-hmm. I reckon. Mm-hmm. So, uh, there you go. Liverpool at 1.78. Thank you very much. That'll so, do. What do you think there, Martin? <laughs> yeah, going for the same. Uh, Liverpool 1.78. Um, I just, exactly like Dan said, I just don't think Southampton have got enough. Um, but Liverpool have been a little bit of a mixed bag lately. You know, obviously, they beat, you know, they beat Huddersfield quite comfortably, but then, and, and got a good point against Spurs, actually, when they probably should have won. Um, but then they're going to lose to West Brom and Swansea. I mean, what's that about? Um, so, I know Southampton are in a good, good run of form at the moment, but they just, they struggle to score goals and, and I just think St Mary's is a nice place to go. It's a nice pitch. It's a nice place to, pl- to play good open football, which Liverpool love doing. Um, and yeah, I think, I think Liverpool win quite comfortably and I think 1.78 is really good value. Like Dan said, I think it I probably should be a, a little bit lower. Um, so yeah, thankfully we agree on that one. All right, good stuff. We have uh, uh we have our accumulator then, but I'll give it to you later on at the end. There's only one match to go anyway. Uh, Pro Tipster Dan is frothing at the mouth thinking about the <laughs> prospects of this third place Aston Villa taking on his boys, 19th place Birmingham City. Dan, take it away. So I've got four letters written in my prep. Uh, S O T V. I'll let you guess what the S is, uh, OTV is on the, um, yeah. Okay, so, um, them, they, the filth, um, the team whose name I will not pronounce out loud. Um, they've won six on the spin, although, um, so, okay, I'll give you the, the, the head prediction, I'll give you the heart prediction. So the head prediction is they've won six on the spin, um, they're going really well at the moment. We are in the back of a really, really crappy 4-1 after extra time defeat to Huddersfield. Players are knackered. Yes, we did rotate for Huddersfield, but the players play for about 60 minutes and then just like, Ugh. Um, and although we've won quite a bit, we've done really well recently, we're just getting to the point now where it's like, how much more can this momentum take? Hopefully, Jack McGone was back, but we've lost uh, a steady Eddie left back Jonathan Grounds to a medial ligament uh, uh, damage in his knee, which is a real blow because mm-hmm. our choice left back is Cohen Brummel, who can't play in a four, um, or a right footed left back. So we play either um, Jenkinson, uh, who, who obviously used to play for West Ham on loan, um, either him, or I think we'll play Maxim Collan, who's been playing at right back. We'll just move him across. And it's mm-hmm. not bad as it sounds because Snodgrass plays, kind of cuts in when he plays on. On the right for, uh, for them, but the, the head prediction, we're not, we're going to struggle to get in and out of this. However, mm-hmm. the heart prediction. Yes, they've won six on the spin, but they've been jammy. Um, Snodgrass last minute goal. Burton came back to make it three two. And this is one of those games where four goes out the window. It's going to be nasty. Um, you know, they have to kick it, it has to kick off at midday on a Sunday, just because it's the only time the police can have enough people there to handle it. They have to bus in the away fans, because <laughs> they just can't have away fans walking to the ground, apparently. Um, it, it, I can't stress how nasty, this is a truly, truly hateful derby. Um I'll, I'll, I'll remember the 2002 um, one in September 2002, our first mm-hmm. game in the top flight for 16 years. All we'd had all week was how they were going to take us apart. We smashed them 3-0. There was at least three pitch invasions. One guy got done, sent to jail for giving 
Peter Enkelman a slap after he conceded the second. It went off after the, it went off before the game, it went off after the game. Um, and, um, okay, so they are averaging about 30 days, and this game's a complete sellout, uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh 42,000 fans. And I don't doubt there'll be a few of our mob in the home end. So, it's just <laughs> gonna be horrible. And, my honest advice, my honest advice, hand on heart, Pontus, is watch it, but don't bet on it, because you, you've mm-hmm. got no chance. Um, the only thing I would look at would be cards, because um, it generally is a bit tasty. And if um, Gabby Agbonlahor is anywhere near the side, <laughs> better to score against us, even though he's crap. Um, <laughs> yeah, because he always does. Yeah, if you get a chance to watch it online, um, it won't be a it won't be a classic, but it will be a true example of a proper English derby. I will be honest and say that I, I've been to quite a few of the home ones. I don't like going to the away ones because it's just it, it's just not it's just not good. Um, I, I I don't I don't like football violence. I don't like being yeah. I don't be near football violence because I I'm a coward and I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> and um, I've seen. I've seen all sorts. Uh, I will admit I stir it a bit. Um, if any, I, I, I have my own personal Bowman City website. I wrote something about this earlier this week, and I used an acrostic. An acrostic is where the first letter of it, the, each paragraph spells out a word or a sentence. And it's I'll bloody hilarious. <laughs> what the sentence was. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my hand on heart, don't. Don't bet on I, I'm not going to bet on it. Don't bet on it. Okay. Because it's impossible to predict. Very good. Uh, Martin? Uh, I might have a little tinkle at this one at Villa at 1.71. Um, Ooh. No, I was, I was just looking at that 2002 game, actually, that you mentioned, and there's actually there's five Irish players in there uh, playing that day. Um, Kenny Cunningham, Jeff Kenner, Clinton Morrison, who scored. Legend. S- Steve Staunton. Ah, even a bigger legend. Uh, Mark Kinsella. Oh, Mark Kinsella, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. All blast in um, the past. But, I mean, yeah, that was back in 2002. I mean, Birmingham haven't actually won at Villa Park since December 2004. Um, so that 2-0. Is, uh, 2-0. <laughs> Stan Lazaridis and Jeff Horsfield. Stan Lazaridis, what, what a legend. Um, no, 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 it wasn't that one. It was a 2 what? sorry, 2-1. Yeah, it's two one. It was Clinton Morrison and David Dunn. Actually, that's it. Yeah, we should have had five in the first half. It's about <laughs> Gareth Barry scored for them. But um, yeah, that was the last time you won at Phillip Park, and um, it, I'm going to enjoy. I'm going to enjoy watching it. I am going to watch it. Um, I I think Robert Snodgrass will have a good game. Um, he seems to be coming into his own at Villa now after we nearly ruined his career. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> um, but yeah, 1.71 for Villa for me. Um, obviously, I've got no affiliation with either club, so 1.71. Just looking at the form of both sides, it's at it's at Villa Park. It's a derby. I I think I don't know. I, I don't know. I just just see Birmingham throwing their toys out of the pram a little bit um, when it's not going their way. Might have the odd red card here and there. Um, so yeah, Villa for me. Okay, as promised, I said we were going to give uh, an accumulator uh, from all of the bets that the boys agreed on. So we'll start protester David, uh, and we'll give um, and we'll also put in the the two two tips from our uh, protesters David and Marco as well. So let's start with David's uh, Villarreal and Alaves. So Villarreal to win, and what did the English boys agree on? So Tottenham versus Arsenal, Tottenham to win. Stevenage versus Luton, Luton to win. Uh, and Southampton versus Liverpool, Liverpool to win. And from Pro Tips Sir Marco, we had Napoli versus Lazio over 2.5 goals. So in an accumulator, you will get that of odds of, uh, just over 20. So 20.22 is the highest one I can see here. So, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a fiver on that. And if that comes in, we'll donate it to a charity. All right. I hope you like the sound of that. Right. So look, that brings us to the end then of all our, of all of the matches that we wanted to talk about. Um, make sure and check out Pro Tipster where you can earn money by sharing your winning sports tips. So let's do a couple of reminders. Of course, you can listen to us 
on iTunes, Stitcher, all of the other Android podcatchers as well, and we're on the ProTipster.com uh, website as well. Um, lads, give us your reminders then. Martin, where are you on social media? Yeah, guys, come and say hi to me on Twitter at ProTips.ENG or on Facebook. I'm open to abuse or questions at ProTips to Martin, three separate words. Daniel? You can find me on Facebook at uh, ProTips to Dan, all one word. On Twitter, ProTips to Dan, all one word. Um, I will warn you, if we lose on Sunday, I'm not likely to be in a good mood. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want to post abuse, you do so at your um, at your own discretion. And- <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, and be warned, I might bite back. <laughs> <laughs> right, and you can get me on Twitter, Pro Tips for Pod, and Pro Tips for Paddy on Facebook, and of course, the three of us were always hanging around the uh, Pro Tips for Facebook, Pro Tips for UK Facebook page as well. So I got through this without crying on a very sad day when Wessie Houlihan um, retired from international football. But thanks, boys, for joining me and getting me through it. You've been great shoulders to cry on. Um, and what else have I got to say? Yeah, tell all of your football mad friends about us because we have a great podcast here. We have some magic uh, pro tipster experts from all over Europe and that's going to continue to get better and better the bigger we grow. So make sure and tell all of your... Uh, actually, do us a favor. Tell just one of your football mad friends about us. If everyone told it, one person about this podcast, we would continue to grow and grow and we'd be able to give you better and better podcasts every single time we have one. All right, so that's it. I don't ever ask for much, but I'm going to ask for that. And that's all. So, uh, yeah, look, enjoy the football this weekend and uh, I hope you make a few bob. Good luck. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipster Global or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipster E-N or ProTipster I-R-L. Bye.